right now everyone is thinking about COVID-19 vaccines as it seems like we're closer now than ever to finally having one. Dr. Fialcoli joins us live. So Dr. DBL Nation has a long list of questions about vaccines. So let's get to some of them right now. Dina wants to know, should you get a vaccine if you've already had COVID-19? This is a great question, Dina. So the official statement of the CDC is no comment, which I find incredibly unhelpful. So here is my personal take on the situation and what I would tell my family, friends, and my patients. Yes, even if you've had COVID-19, you need to go and get the vaccine for three main reasons. Number one, not everybody who's had the infection mounts antibodies, so you may not be protected. Number two, even if you do mount antibodies, they can go down over time, and that's what the data is suggesting. And we're seeing that this virus is behaving just like the common cold where you can get it again and again. So certainly get that vaccine as a sort of a safety precaution. And, and number three, the immunity to the vaccine may actually be different than the immunity to natural infection. It may end up lasting longer. We just don't know. So I would say yes, go and get that vaccine even if you've had COVID-19. All right, Doc, our next question is from Mateo and he asks, did people with pre-existing conditions participate in vaccine trials? They did, and that's the beautiful thing, that regardless of your age, whether you had pre-existing conditions, um, whether you were a specific race, most people generally responded in the same way to the vaccine. So it worked reasonably well um, and comparably well in all of those types of different groups. But the group that got left out, Jeff, that I want to point out is pregnant women or nursing women. So Sam, if the vaccine was available today, I would not advise you to go and get it because we just don't have any data in this group. And because people like you are not able to get the vaccine, the rest of us have to make sure we get immunized so that we can protect you through herd immunity. I want to get a sticker that says do it for Sam. Thank you. And yeah. I just want to clarify it's because I'm breastfeeding, not that I'm pregnant again. Uh, Nation. No, we want the rumor. Not we want to stir up some controversy. I'm two and done. Two <laughs> and, but I am still breastfeeding. All okay. right. All right. Uh, <laughs> Doc, uh, really quickly, uh, viewer Alexandra, I like that name, wants to know, would you recommend that children get vaccinated? As a parent, I want to know this as well. This is a tough one. We have very limited data on children. Now Pfizer has enrolled kids as young as 12 and Moderna just as of this morning said they're going to start to enroll kids as young as 13. But we don't really have a lot of reporting on how safe it is in kids and we know that kids can have a different immune system. We certainly don't have any information on kids younger than 12. So I would say for the time being, no. I, if I had children, I would not take them to get immunized yet because we don't have enough data. And again, just to remind everyone, that's why the rest of us us need to get the vaccine because there are some groups in our society that may not be able to get it right away. Doc, what do you do? I know we only have a short time left. What do you do once you get the vaccine? Or is there going to be some sort of wristband system? How does that work to know if you have the vaccine? So Jeff, it's two doses separated by a month. And just like we do with hepatitis titers or MMR titers, we may actually end up implementing a program where we check your blood to see if you mounted that antibody response. And then you get a little card that says that you have antibodies against the coronavirus and that would be your immunity passport. Wow, Ooh. interesting. Thank you so much, Dr. Coley, for clarifying as I'm always. We appreciate you.